I'm painting a blue jay today, a particularly colorful member of the corvid family. And these birds have spectacularly blue colors on their plumage. And I will try and match this blue with different blue pigments that I have in my palette. So as always, I'm doing my preparatory sketch and I'm starting with a very light colored pencil. I've sped up this part quite a bit so um, that we can get to the painting part a little bit quicker. At this stage, I'm overall just trying to capture the posture of the bird. I'm checking the proportions and try to block in the basic forms, the basic shapes that I can see, uh, the major feather groups and then a few of the details. So I'm starting this sketch phase with a light colored pencil to make um, searching lines, freer movements. And then in a minute, I'll switch to my regular pencil to lock in the shapes uh, to a definite outline and to uh, make these sort of bold strokes that I can see are in the right position. And this will help me to get a better uh, preliminary drawing for my painting. And this colored pencil is in fact a water soluble one. So part of it will just disappear if I add watercolor on top. Also, it's a very uh, light gray color. So it will not really um, be visible or come into the foreground. Here you can see I'm making sure that all the feathers on the wing are in the right position. So this bird has a really sort of bit of complicated structure and pattern on its wings. And I want to make sure that I'll match this in my painting. The paper that I'm painting on today is Fabriano Artistico. And this is a cotton paper that I haven't used it a lot in the past, but so far I'm very happy with the results. It's really, really nice paper, especially for these kind of detailed paintings. So as you can see, I'm starting with a very light blue gray wash uh, to fill in a few of the light values around the eye and on the beak. And I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of color here. So I'm building up these layers with a very pale uh, color. And I'm actually filling the blue area on the breast and on the back with the same light color. And in a minute, I'll drop in my bloom. And what I ended up using for this bird is a mix of uh, Talo blue, which is a very intense greenish blue and ultramarine violet, which is a very soft granulating reddish violet and it gives a beautiful mix. So you can see this in the uh, right corner and I'm starting to add this uh, on the crest of the bird and in a minute on the back region and around the feathers. So I'm actually using different blue mixes for the back and for the feather region. And you almost don't see the granulation in this mix. So it's really a very light and lovely color. And I can intensify the color by dropping in more paint and spreading it around with my brush. For the wing section, I mixed up a slightly different blue. So it's a symphony of different blues in this one. And I used ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. And you can see this is a much greener blue. So in my reference and also in the reference that I looked at, the blue of the back and of the crest is slightly different from the blue of the wings. So uh, I try to make sure that I can match these different blue tones. So um, if you want in this painting, it's really a study of different blue tones. I'm also dropping in the color, the same color as the wing for the tail and making it lighter at the front part.
again I'm being a bit careful on the wing section here because uh, the wings have these uh, white bands, these wing bands, and I don't want to overpaint them. So I want to leave them white uh, so that I don't have to come back with uh, gouache or anything later. This is always a possibility if you overpaint details that you need to, to get back to their white uh, color later, but I'd rather not overpaint it at this time if I can. So I'm taking my time for the patterns on the wings here. And while the blue is drying, I can add my uh, gray, another layer of gray to the bottom of the beak and the dark markings around the eyes. So I'm using a fairly big brush here. This is a size 8 brush, but it has a really fine tip. So uh, this is actually not a very uh, expensive brush. This is a synthetic and this is just uh, the sort of no-name brand that my art supply dealer is offering. So sometimes you can be really lucky and get uh, inexpensive brushes and they will work very well. So it doesn't always have to be sable. And I'm very carefully painting the small dark parts around the eye and on the face. Taking my time to get these interesting uh, structures right. And I also add the same color to the feet. And while the dark parts are drying, I'm working more on the wing section. So I'm making these dark lines to indicate the stacks of feathers and the separation between the single feathers. I'm also adding a second layer to the wing, which is a bit darker around the edges and in the middle. So there are these sort of shadowy areas there. And now I'm intensifying this blue mix on the wings. You can see that on this crest region, the blue that I added, my blue mix of ultramarine violet and Taylor blue, almost got a little bit uh, too much into the violet section. So I'll see if I need to overpaint this later. And I'm dropping in darker paint on the back. So now you can see this blue is really building up intensity. I'm lifting out paint in a few sections so that there will be um, a few areas where it's a bit paler. And you can see one of his primary feathers sticking out and these are actually middle gray. So I'm adding this in too. Removing the edge. And when all of this has dried, I can add another layer of blue and make things slightly darker, add a bit more structure. So I'm building up these layers and I'm adding information, adding three dimensionality. And the nice thing about this technique is that you can really take your time. You really don't have to rush things. So, so this is obviously a little bit different than a quick sketch, but it can give you really a lot of time to um, study your subject and to learn where the different uh, areas go, where the different colors go. So you get to know the bird that you're painting or any other subject uh, a little bit better this way. And I find it really quite fascinating to get closer to animals by painting them. You can see I'm refining a few of the shadows around the face. I'm making the throat a little bit darker. And uh, this is all basically white, but I'm adding a shadow to show uh, where the light is coming from. So it comes from above and um, now I'm adding the a darker layer to the feet and to the claws. 
One thing that I haven't checked before I painted this bird is what kind of sounds these jays make. So I know our European jays are quite loud and they actually make a lot of noise. Uh, some people call them the police of the woods. And they're not as beautifully colored as these blue jays, but they have also really nice uh, coloring. And as I said, they're really loud and make these annoying uh, noises. I'm adding a few uh, textured brush strokes around the um, front part of the wing and around the neck. And also in the region where the shoulder area, so the scapular region, is changing into the wing region. So I want to bring this out a little bit more. And I'm mixing in a darker blue, so I also have Indian Throne Blue in my palette. And I'm using it with Neutral Grey to get this very muted, pale, um, dark blue. While all of this is drying, I'm adding a little bit of structure to this little branch that the bird is sitting on. So lately I've been experimenting with just leaving the branch in colored pencil and just adding a little bit of water to it. Um, I don't always like to paint all these branches, but I like to have elements in my painting that are a little bit more um, reminiscent of a sketch. And I'm mixing up um, versions of the same color as before, but with slightly more intensity, so that it will show when I paint it over what uh, layers I already have. And so bit by bit, I can build up this painting, add color in, in the places that need it. And now I'm adding a quite the dark mix of neutral gray I'm starting to add these dark markings on the bird. And I have to say these markings really make the bird look spectacular. So I'm wiggling my brush a little bit as I'm painting to make these uh, marks a bit more irregular. Not just like painted bands, but um, to show that these are feathers that are arranged in a way so that they look like bands. Now you can start to see how the feathers are stacked on top of each other. So I don't need to paint in every single feather detail. Just need to make sure that the viewer can see how this bird is, how, how the feathers are, are arranged. And you can see I've switched to a slightly smaller brush for this. It's also the time to add a bit more texture with a smaller brush. So making these brush strokes, these uh, small tiny motions, And as always, I'm making sure that the areas on the face are really closely matched to what I can see in my reference. And by now, the painting is almost finished. Now I'm adding water to the colored pencil. As you can see, it's a water-soluble one. So it will spread a little bit and I'm just going very lightly over this so that the structure will be there. Now I'm taking my colored pencil in black and it's a bit easier to add these tiny details in the face with a colored pencil. So I'm making the marks that are hard to make with a brush. So the Fabriano paper really worked well for me. I was really happy with the amount of manipulation I could do on this paper. And also um, the colored pencil on top, uh, of course, uh, when it's dry, but um, it will always be a stress test for uh, even good cotton paper. So I was really happy with the results on this. 
And that's the finished painting. If you've enjoyed this video, then check out my video class How to Draw Birds. In this video series, I show you everything you need to get started when drawing birds in your sketchbook. I go over the basics of bird anatomy, show drawing techniques and tips, and give several demonstrations in pencil and watercolor from start to finish. The whole course has almost two hours of video. So come with me and learn how to draw birds.